welcome back to Smoky Mountain Logging, episode 4, with me, Mr. Sealy P. I have been fairly busy up in Devil's Canyon since the last episode. Um, I'm up to 158,000. I've got another full load and the price has just started to drop. It's at $307 for a thousand litres and it's starting to fall, which is leading me to reevaluate a few things. For a full load at 307, it works out 21,500 something 536 or 32 dollars so 21,000 dollars for a full load of 70,000 litres of wood chip which isn't brilliant I've had an absolute ton of feedback over the last couple of episodes mostly people telling me I'm an idiot um, and um, I should try different things and why I'm making a real meal of and I am making a real meal of certain things but the point was um, I wanted to show different pieces of equipment being used and how that, you know, realistically on a lot of these maps, some of these bits of equipment are, are worse than useless. There's, there's not really a lot you can use them for properly, but also then looking at different bits of equipment and how they could be utilised in ways they weren't intended for. These ramps, for example, were in my mind a great idea if you had the side tipping trailer which we haven't at the moment but I have been shown a couple of other ideas by various different people Fragdad, Alien Jim, Barris um, if I haven't mentioned name I apologise loads of people have given me advice and comments and feedback of things to try and apparently Mr CDP Green is not, is not particularly liked, I know I do use this colour a lot I, I, it just became a thing so, first thing I'm going to do is, hopefully if I can, change the design colour. I don't want to do something boring, but you know. I think the green and orange will look fantastic together. Yep, that'll do. Now, as I said, the Gens HEM, let me just have a quick look in forestry equipment, the Gens HEM 583Z, not my favourite cup of tea, the BA725D I've used a fair amount. Barris gave me some advice, which I was actually in thinking about it in my head, was thinking of trying out at some point anyway. I was going to use the BA725D at some point in an episode and... The, the one I'm going to use today I was going to use in an episode I am going to do more logging not just wood chipping and I'm going to adjust the ramp setup and do something a little bit different there what I'm going to do is just drop off this trailer to say and head back over but if I keep hitting bits that's not going to work is it and head back over to Devil's Canyon 
I will see you there in a moment. So as you can see, I've cleared a fair area out so far. I think I did a... Well, how many loads of myself done? Five? Five full loads. So I've cleared a bit of an area, and I could continue here at Devil's Canyon and carry on clearing this out. But I'm going to move the equipment. I'm going to move down to Fireweed Lake to uh, Lumber Point 2, just for something a little bit different, a change in scenery, and the next piece of equipment that I'm going to try out. a flat ish put this on and then we'll get the scorpion king on and we'll shift all this obviously the Valtra I've taken back the um, the wood chipper the horrible gens I don't like tried that which is something I said I was going to do in oh, lose track of what episode but on Drummud Farm I said I was going to try that wood chipper out and I have now and it's ghastly I will be back here at some point there's real mixed um, very mixed feelings over this map logging in general it's very marmite it seems you either love it or you hate it there are plenty of people that don't like it they like the full forestry thing there are a few people that have said you know what i'm going to give it a go um so yeah it's one of those things i'm going to get back onto westbridge hills get another episode done on there because it's been a little while since i've been on there but i thought since the new map was out and i kind of got a bit um hooked I think is probably the best way to describe it it's that kind of it's a challenge you don't want to shy away from something's not working I couldn't find my flow I couldn't find a rhythm and I was desperate to try and find a rhythm and in doing so carried on and on and on and on right that's on I'll get this over to Lumber Point 2 and see you there in a moment. So, my reason for coming over to Lumber Point 2 at Fireweed Lake is that little beauty over there behind. But also, I thought I'd clear a nice view out towards the lake it might be quite nice some people can come and have picnics and that kind of thing um, and here's the thing this is the gens he 700 sta it is a static wood chipper and if we go into placeables which is where it is it says any logs you put into this machine are converted into wood chips that are immediately sold to the sawmill so there's no need for um, lorries there's no need for running backwards and forwards the difference with this as well is the problem I was having press the wrong button the problem I was having was this that obviously the wood chip price now I sold that last load has dropped and is dropping anyway every time you sell a load the price drops then you've got to wait for it to pick back up again and it becomes a real pain using this machine you get a set amount of money and it doesn't matter how much you chuck through this that doesn't fluctuate it won't go down that said it won't go up you won't you're not going to get a bonus on it but i found something slightly intriguing i'm using that word again there we go intrigue this is an intriguing map um plus i get to cut some of these trees down i haven't done any of these ones yet so i thought i'd come over have a go and see how we get on now this would just be a turn and burn this is just grinding it's grinding through trees and just chucking them through i'm not cutting them down then picking them up with that bag back lock log grab the bio belts one i'm just using the scorpion king pulling them over chopping them directly into there and seeing what we get so 
So, let's find one to start with. I need to open that out a little bit, I think. Give myself a little bit of room. There we go. If I press the right buttons. There we go, open that up. Sapling down, should I? Now this is on all the time. It doesn't turn off. I'm stuck on the tree. Must be. I'm going to cut one meter lengths again. Just makes it easier. You can feed whole logs in the top right hand corner. The price will go up. As it gets fed through. Now some of these trees are obviously going to be bigger than others. So for that relatively small tree I've got 1086. Which isn't too bad. Now this is going to be really weird if this doesn't work now. Quite frustrating. Right, let's see on a slightly larger one. Worked on the other trees. It could be because these are a smaller type, I'm not too sure. But anyway, let's see how we get on. But it does save all the hassle of running backwards and forwards, of prices changing, and all that kind of thing. bit more of a heavy juicy bit of machinery. I need to find a really tall one of these. And that's not too bad. Let's try that one. Let's try this big one here. Some of the other the bigger trees, I did try this out. Just to test it. I didn't want to make myself look silly, did I? Not that I've done that repeatedly. Um, and one of the big ones, I got nearly 4,000 for one tree. But if I was only getting 21,000 for an entire load, getting 4,000 for one tree is brilliant. So everyone that kind of mentioned this, people said, oh yeah, but you don't get very much money for them. It's a much lower rate. It's not very good. I'm not sure. We will see. Oh, that was brilliant. That just... Uh Oh. Not sure what I got for that now because it did it part way through and then stopped. Never mind. For that one, for the part that I just did, three thousand four hundred and thirteen. There was the bit I did before, and then it kind of it went a bit funny. Um, actually, it should be on the recording, but we'll see. Now, looking at it like that with the bigger trees, that's going to work out more cost-effective than the low price you're getting for wood chips. So. Admittedly, this costs 72,000 to buy, and you have to buy it, and it's static. So, once I finish cutting all the trees around here, 
unless I'm going to start carting them over for miles away, I would have to sell it and then put a new static one in place somewhere else. But I'll get half the money back on that, and as long as I make more than that, I've made money. So kind of a, a minor false economy in there somewhere, but it does work and the money's not too bad. So I'm going to plug away for a little bit on this and I'll see you in a little while when hopefully this area's cleared a little bit more and I've made a bit more money. See you in a bit. Absolutely, Lauren. So a little while later, we're up to 212,000. There's a little bit more than that. There's a couple more ramps I've bought. I've got some stump grinding to do, but I've cleared a fair old area out here. And I've put in what I said I was going to do. A nice little picnic area. Some benches and tables. Little fire pits. Lovely. With a lovely view over Fireweed Lake. So, lumber point two. We've had a pretty good innings on here actually so far. I am going to leave this in place for the time being because I am going to carry on doing a little bit around here. Um, I have become a bit of a tree snob. I know it's weird, isn't it? Um, in that, these ones, I think are silver birch. If you come up really close to them, they look like silver birch trees. When you cut them, they look like silver birch. They've got that kind of look about them. Um, they generally are smaller. There are some tall ones, but generally they're smaller. The other trees, which are more like the pine or fir or whatever you want to call them, they've got the darker trunks, where are they? Over here. Like the ones that grow in Devil's Canyon, are much taller, which mu with much thicker trunks. So the taller ones with thicker trunks were what I was aiming for. A couple of deadfalls I've taken out as well, because they were paying more. I was getting around 5,000 for each one of those, so yeah, I was avoiding the small ones going for the larger ones that make more money I mean it kind of makes sense but if you're going to clear an area you've got to clear all of it so I will come back I'm going to take some of these small trees out and sort those out but that's it the picnic area is in I've cleared a nice big bit here on to a little bit of logging that's the next thing in this episode it's going to get a two for one on this we're chipping and logging all in the same episode we'll see how long it takes of course but um, we'll fit that in I will see you back over at the main yard area. Well, it's not even a yard, is it? It's huge. Um, in a moment.
I'll promise you some logging and here we are it is quarter to seven and I am loading up the IT runner wood container this was also suggested to me to give this a go with a combination of ramps I started doing six meter cuts and realized I could have got away with sevens although sixes do seem to fit a little bit better so I'm just finishing off loading this I've got a couple more logs left on the floor that one didn't particularly going very well but there we go we're almost full I don't want to overfill it because I always have that issue with the uh, the logs all start shuffling around and they fall out and I had that with bales with the IT runner pack I had a real issue with bales actually what we'll do is we'll stop there I think jump out of that yeah the IT runner pack I used it on come on what map it was now and did bales um, and they jiggled around and fell out and so I didn't use the IT runner pack again um, which was a bit disappointing it's not completely full but it will do for what I need to do at the moment it's a nice mod this right hopefully tension straps on hopefully I'll hold that in place should have enough horsepower just it's only 250 horsepower and I imagine this trailer is probably quite heavy now the ramp setup has changed or I say it's changed I've added to Interestingly though, from what I was shown and what was recommended to me, and it could be, it could be me, I might have needed to get rid of these before doing what I've done. I've got a ramp up and a ramp down into it, which hadn't, I didn't occur to me. On the one that was shown to me, the ramp is like pretty much in the middle. I, it wouldn't allow me to. Every time I tried to put it in this middle, it kept on saying cannot place here. That could be because these are all here. Or it could just be that it just won't let you put it in the trigger. As soon as I shifted it over slightly, it allowed me to. Which should give me enough of a ramp to do what I'm going to do. So before I lose the light completely... I'm going to need to get this just right. So that back wheels here are really bearing the brunt of this. Careful, I don't get caught up on the side there. Okay, well, let's see if this works right tension straps off now I'm getting some wobble uh, right and unload not too shabby that worked now at the moment I've got the IT runner uh, base, the bottom part, 
and the wood container top part leased. That actually worked really well. I don't know whether or not, I don't think you'll get a full log trailer in there, but that's not too bad. That works, but, but let's be honest, out of all the ones I've done so far, that's worked better than all of them so far. Um, like I say, the log prices, you don't get a huge amount. Um, and you'd have to do quite a few trailer loads of that to make some money. But that did work. What I might do is have a fiddle around off screen, remove the four ramps and see if I can move them over just to make it easier for loading and unloading. And see how we get on. Right, let's take this back over. I'm kind of moving the whole um, logging operation along this field area here. It's a pity it's a big open area and I thought, oh actually, you know what, I could plough some of this out have a field, but there's a lot of big boulders and rocks right in the middle. Really annoying that. Anyway, this works. I, I really am impressed with that. Absolutely brilliant. Now, to make life much, much easier for yourself, if you wanted to, I could unload that and have it on the floor, which means obviously with the the lifts, the telehandler or the wheel loader, if you're using the wheel loader especially, you haven't got to lift it as high, which would make loading a lot easier. Can you still do the tension straps with it on the floor? You can. Okay, that's not so bad. So then once you've got it full, do up the tension straps, then pick it up. Hopefully you shouldn't lose any logs off the back of it. But this setup works, so... I had a few people suggest this to me actually um, on various different comments and messages and uh, video links and pictures and <laughs> all sorts have been sent to me um, so that does work and it works very effectively it's a pity they don't do an IT runner pack like with a longer IT runner bigger trailers but I suppose it's down to weight isn't it especially when you've got the the, um, the grain can trailers and the dump trailer and that kind of stuff it would be just too heavy that works, good, happy with that. Carry on with some logging. I have got a few odds and ends sitting here. Well, one big one actually. What I'll do is use the, um, this is brilliant. The Scorpion King, wow. <coughs> Straight off the bat, get that, lease it. Do whatever you need to do, get one. That takes away the headache of manual cutting, all sorts of nonsense. It's a brilliant, brilliant piece of kit. So, that's what I'll do now, it's carrying as I was doing before, build myself up a massive pile of logs and get some more logs sold. More wood chipping up the other end at lumber point two. So as the light starts to fade, it's seven o'clock, I've got a pile here, I've got a pile over there, I'm going to carry on piling them up, piling the piles and then loading up the IT runner trailer again, 
and probably part way through the night at least I'm going to go back over to um, lumber point two get a few more trees down and through that wood chipper I need to get the money up a bit because at midnight I'm going to get clobbered for leasing costs because I'm leasing this I'm leasing the wheel loader I'm leasing the IT runner at the moment so until I've got enough money to actually buy those bits of equipment what I could do hopefully if I can get enough money by then maybe give back the um, Scorpion King and buy one but I need 317,000 I think so just over another 100,000 might take me a while to do that but I could do it between now and midnight um, so I might do that that will save me a bit on leasing costs because I think the Scorpion King is one of the more expensive ones to lease and we'll crack on as I always do that is the end of this episode this is going to be a relatively short let's play once I've had a go with most of the bits of equipment, once I've found a, a routine that works, I'm not going to spend the next month just clearing the map of trees, because that, like I say, for viewers that's going to get really boring. For me, it would be a kind of a, you know, a challenge. I get very addicted to kind of setting myself uh, challenges, things I need to do, and I could carry on and on. So this may only well be five, six, maybe seven episodes long, and then I'm going to go onto something else, carry on with West, uh, Westbridge Hills, etc. But I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I hope you found it, again, useful, informative, even if it's what not to do. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.